Welcome to Creep Time with Silas Dean. Today we are gonna get into three of the most chilling disappearances that were ever caught on camera. I've wanted to do a caught on camera episode for a long time. I don't know, there's something really unsettling to me about footage that's captured that might have been the last of someone, if that makes sense. But before we get started, a huge thank you to you just for stopping by. Thank you for stopping by to watch Creep Time. If you could give a like, a comment, suggest new cases down below, talk to me a little bit in those comments, and if you can subscribe, turn on notifications that is always always appreciated and if you want even longer creep time content creep time the podcast is now live and available you can catch us on spotify we're on apple music just click the link down in the bio and you can listen for as long as you'd like and with that let's dive into these cases number three 29 year old lauren demolo a resident of cape coral florida who was last seen on camera while applying for a job at the time, Lauren was living with her then-boyfriend, and the consensus between family and friends was that she had a long-standing issue with substance abuse, particularly with prescription medications. When Lauren was a teenager, she was in a bad car accident that had instantly hooked her on pain medications for years. CCTV footage was released by the police department showing Lauren at the cashier's counter as she sifted through an application for the gas station. But this morning wasn't an ordinary one. Just hours earlier, a maintenance worker at the complex where she lived had a conversation with Lauren, where she was asking about nearby apartments, how much cheaper they might be for her to live in. This didn't quite make sense, as not only did Lauren love her apartment where she lived, but her sister Cassie had just given her more than enough money to cover her rent. So why was Lauren trying to get out? After leaving the gas station, her last known activity on her phone included a Facebook call to her boyfriend Gabriel, one that he would never pick up. Following the call and the camera footage, Lauren was never seen again. Despite Gabriel claiming to come home that evening and said that she was nowhere in the apartment, he lied to the family and informed them that he had already called the police. But according to phone records, Gabriel never made a single call to 911 that night. So the big question from investigators is why? Lauren's purse was eventually found in a nearby park shortly after her disappearance. Inside, it still included her wallet, her ID, and all of her credit and debit cards. But sadly, without Lauren's body, her mysterious disappearance became a cold case, and all that remains of her last known whereabouts was the final footage from the gas station on June 19th. Many have speculated that it was a plot by her boyfriend that the second she left the gas station, he was waiting out there for her, and whatever he did to her, he made sure she disappeared. However, investigators failed to find additional footage that could support this or any signs of a struggle in the parking lot. So for Lauren, the case remains unsolved. Number 2. 40-year-old Michael Stewart Michael was a union carpenter who was part of the efforts in rebuilding Ground Zero after the attacks on 9-11. By all accounts, Michael was a hard-working and honest person, but on Christmas Day in 2014, Michael never showed up to meet his ex or spend time with his children, which wasn't like him. He was reported as a missing person that day, and the investigation unfolded that would uncover some chilling clues. Police were able to trace his last known whereabouts to the Back to Life barbershop located in Port Richmond. Here, he's seen on camera with a man identified as Angelo Nassimi, a friend of his, while on camera, you can see that Michael is the person approaching Angelo who's seated in the chair getting his hair cut. At face value, the exchange looks harmless. Michael approaches in a playful manner, and the interaction is fairly familiar. He leans into Angelo, who then pushes him away as a joke, and then Michael embraces his head. If we scroll a bit further down the footage, you'll even see that they're putting on their hats and scarves, as if they're preparing to walk out together. Another sign that they were very very familiar with each other, but this would be one of the last times that Michael was ever seen. A later look into his phone records uncovered a single text that was sent to his mother on December 21st. It read, please help me, mom. But it's unclear as to whether or not she received that text or if she ever saw it. After his disappearance, Angela was in custody by December 31st for a domestic charge against his then girlfriend, Zamara Sanchez. But during the interrogation, Sanchez made a confession. She claimed that Angelo did kill somebody, 
and he asked her to get rid of the body. But it was unclear from her confession if that body was Michael's, and if so, why? What police would learn was that Angelo, Michael, and Sanchez were all having a relationship together at the time, but it was never clear what the nature of that relationship was. Despite her reports that led to a confession and an investigation into the alleged dumping grounds of the body, no additional evidence was ever found to support that Angelo killed Michael. But if that's the case, what did happen to him after he left the barbershop? And what is Angelo not saying? The investigation is ongoing. Number 1. 24-year-old Marilyn Brigion. Prior to Marilyn's disappearance, something had changed with her in the previous months that many people couldn't explain. She'd become withdrawn and detached, a stark contrast to the vibrant person most people knew her as. She was social, well-educated with a high degree, and was proficient in several languages. But Marilyn became discontent. She wanted to become a flight attendant, further her education, and began taking finance courses while living in Toronto. But her friends could see how visibly distressed she'd become, but no one knew why. According to a friend of hers from her university who was with her shortly before she disappeared, Marilyn completely broke down and claimed something horrific had happened to her just four weeks prior, but refused to say what it was. Ultimately, Marilyn would head to Quebec to visit her mother, who had concerns about her as well, and this was around the time that Marilyn began seeing a therapist. On February 17th, while at home with her mother, Marilyn said she was going for a walk, which her mom asked if she could join her on, but Marilyn refused. This would be the last time that she would ever see her daughter. After she left the house, within minutes, Marilyn was seen on camera at a local ATM trying to withdraw money, but her transaction never went through. At this time, she was also seen on camera wearing a backpack that her mother never recognized when she was shown the footage. This would be one of the last times that she was ever seen this day for roughly five hours until a barista who served her later that evening came forward and said that she came into the coffee shop. They claimed that she didn't let on where she was headed, but she did look extremely distressed, like she was in a very depressive state, and it was also noted that at this time, she did come in alone. After she was reported missing by police, they initially believed that she may have taken her own life, but without the discovery of a body, and now hundreds of witnesses over the last decade claiming to have seen Marilyn, this theory quickly fell apart. Since she was last seen on camera in February all those years ago, many have claimed to see her in different locations, always accompanied by a younger man, and always appearing to look extremely distressed. This footage of her remains the last verified sighting of her since 2008, but her family still believes that she might be out there somewhere. The question is, did she leave of her own doing, or did someone force her? Her case remains unsolved.